The Juno World Affairs Council, with support from the Juno Human Rights Commission, presents Kuratulain Bakhtiari. Dr. Bakhtiari founded the Institute for Development Studies and Practices in Pakistan, which supports positive change in communities by training and empowering young people. She was nominated for a Nobel Prize in 2006. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'm deeply thankful from IDSP's behalf, from all the young people from Pakistan, to have me here and to speak to you today. <clears throat> a story, an experience that took us almost uh, 20 years now. But our midwifery program, which is seven years old now, uh, makes me very happy and proud to share in a part of America which resembles so much to Balochistan. Balochistan, again, a very tribal, original, very much uh, people are connected with their land and with their uh, customs and the traditions, and they love where they live. And same things I found here too, a lot of similarities. And I am so happy standing here today and sharing that experience with you, especially of women of, of that province. Women who were, who were uh, what can I say, women who were thought to be just good enough to stay at home and not to go out, not to be seen, not to be heard. And the younger you are, the more intelligent you are. And if you're more good looking you are, the more locked up you are. And that is what we were working with. We happen to be working with. It is all like some energy who, who connected us. And I'm, I'm really thankful for all the people in the last seven years who helped us see that path and who helped us and gave us support that we dare to be on that path. And we really are uh, making good impact and a real story is emerging, which is transforming the grassroots in Pakistan through the women who were not supposed to be seen, not supposed to be heard. So I'll just share with you, uh, I would like you to take you to Balochistan with this film that we have if that's uh, possible. Should I run the film, video? Institute for Development Studies and Practices, uh, created in 1998. With a focus on young people, uh, men and women both, uh, to empower them into uh, meaningful citizens and uh, professionals at the community level. Most of the time what we saw and the reason of creating the institution was that the majority population of, is young in Pakistan and majority of this population is missed out of the mainstream uh, livelihood opportunities. IDSP had graduated about more than 300 young women in, in uh, critical thinking and um, community development activity education. They had a lot of ideas of, uh, of uh, contributing to, the, to their communities. But uh, after their training, uh, we did not, we had nothing to get them into a professional discipline. And I used to always think that uh, uh, where should, uh, should they go from, take their thinking and intellectual development to what direction they should take it. I, I came across uh, uh, Joanne, a great friend and a, and a and a person with uh, excellent vision. And uh, she is the one who inspired me. She came in and she said, why not train them as midwives? Why don't you start a program of midwives? And when I looked at that and I followed it back home uh, into the communities, and, uh, and uh, then I did my uh, little bit of research. And that phenomena was like everywhere in Pakistan. They have diplomas, they have certificates, but they have never touched a patient in, uh, because they have no practice. And this really got us started. हम students को उनके घरों से लेकर आ रहे हैं। यहाँ पे लाकर उनको settle करना ऐसे students जो कि बलूचिस्तान के एरिया से हैं। 
उन फैमिलीज से लाई हुई लड़कियों को एक इस तरह का लाइफस्टाइल देना कि वो एक शहर के इन्वायरमेंट में एडजस्ट कर सकें Uh, very intensively and very uh, uh, you know seriously on the health condition of the midwives as women themselves there were hundreds and hundreds of midwives uh, out there but who do not have that access ki uri bhi karwate hain plus hum demonstration room hai hamare paas wahan par hum inko train karte hain लोगों को सोशली भी तैयार किया जाता है कि इनको माशरे में जाके अब किस तरह काम करना है तो इनमें लीडरशिप क्वालिटीज़ पैदा की जाती हैं एज अ सोशल मोबिलाइजर इनको तैयार किया जाता है इनको एज अ लीडर के साथ साथ फिर इनको बेहतरीन इंसान के तौर पर तैयार किया जाता है मैंने एक अखबार में एक इश्तिहार देखा था आई डी एस पी में मेडिफ्री ट्रेनिंग हो रहा है तो कराची में होगा जब मैंने पढ़ा तो मैंने अपने घर वालों से बात की तो घर वालों ने मुझे ख़ास रिस्पॉन्स नहीं दिया मतलब परमिशन नहीं देना चाहते थे हमारे यहाँ पे हमारे सोसाइटी में इशू ये है कि मतलब लड़कियों को बाहर जाने की इजाज़त बहुत मुश्किल से देते हैं मैंने बहुत मेहनत करके फिर मैं यहाँ पर मतलब मुझे परमिशन मिली वो भी मेरी माँ की सपोर्ट से मिली है इस ट्रेनिंग में हम लोगों ने बहुत सी चीज़ें सीखी थी पोस्ट नेटल केयर इंटी नेटल केयर फैमिली प्लानिंग इस ट्रेनिंग का मकसद ये होता है कि माँ और बच्चे की ज़िंदगी बचाना इसके बाद मैंने ये सोचा था कि मैं अपनी कम्युनिटी में अपनी क्लिनिक खोलूँगी हमारी मतलब जो कम्युनिटी है वहाँ पे डॉक्टर्स और नर्सेज की बहुत कमी है बाद घर जो घर वाले हैं कुछ ऐसे मतलब घर वाले होते हैं जो अपनी जो फीमेल्स को हॉस्पिटल नहीं छोड़ते और मतलब मैं एक कोर्स करके उनके घर जाके डिलीवर करवा सकती हूँ हमारे जो इलाके में हॉस्पिटल बहुत दूर होता है जब ले जाते हैं फिर रास्ते में ही माँ और बच्चे की डेथ हो जाती है यहाँ से जाके मैं इनशाला इन अपनी कम्यूनिटी में जो अवेयरनेस हैल्थ के हवाले से बहुत से मतलब काउंसलिंग करूँगी चाहती हूँ कि आई डी एस पी के जो अदारा है और भी हमारे जैसे जो लड़कियाँ यहाँ लेके आई हैं मतलब उनको सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं क्योंकि कुछ ऐसी लड़कियाँ हैं जो घर से नहीं निकल सकते मतलब वो अफोर्ड नहीं कर सकते अगर आई डी एस पी जैसा अदारा हो तो ये लड़कियों को अब सपोर्ट दे और वो यहाँ आके कोर्स करें और बहुत कुछ सीख सकती है क्या होता है उनको पढ़ने नहीं देते जो लड़के होते हैं वो आगे एजुकेशन बहुत सारे तालीम हासिल कर सकते हैं हमारा मकसद ये है कि हम अपने इलाके में एक कम्युनिटी कॉल है और उसमें माँ बच्चे की और बहुत सारे यानी जो मसाइल मसाइल होते हैं जो प्रेगनेंसी के दौरान उसमें हम हेल्प कर सकें उनको डीएसपी में मैं लास्ट फोर ईयर से इस प्रोजेक्ट को लीड कर रही हूँ लेकिन आ, मेरा इसमें बुनियादी आने की जो वजह थी वो ये थी कि चार साल की उम्र में मेरे अम्मी की डेथ हो गई थी इसी प्रोसेस में यानी कि डिलीवरी के दौरान जो मेरा जो एक एम था कोई मेरे पास ऐसा हुनर हो कि मैं किसी की माँ को बचा सकूँ फिर मुझे पता चला कि आई एक इदारा है जो कि प्रैक्टिकल बेस पे काम करना चाहता है तब उस उस टाइम कुछ ऐसा स्टार्ट नहीं हुआ था ये इस ये जो प्रोग्राम है मिड वाइफरी इसकी प्रिपरेशन हो रही थी कि इसको कैसे आगे ले जाया सकता है तो फिर वहाँ पर हम डॉक्टर साहिबा से मिले डॉक्टर कोरोतौर से हब में और फिर मुख्तलिफ हॉस्पिटलों का विज़िट किया हम जो 
जो लोग थे जो मिड वाइफ थे उन्होंने कतर हॉस्पिटल को सिलेक्ट किया इस बिना पे कि हमें ओनली ऑन लेबर रूम में स्किल्स और प्रैक्टिकल और वहाँ पे जितनी कॉम्प्लिकेट होती हैं उनकी मैनेजमेंट के हमें सारे तरीके सीखने हैं और इसी तरह जाके अपने कम्युनिटीज़ में सर्विस देंगे पर हम लोगों ने तीन महीने तक वो कोर्स किया और उसके अंदर तकरीबन मैंने 185 एटी फाइव डिलीवरीज कराए और वहाँ पे हम लोगों ने पी के पेशेंट को भी मैनेज किया एक लिमसिया के पेशेंट को भी देखा उनके जो मेडिसन थी उनके बारे में पता चला कि लोडिंग डोज कैसे देते हैं उनको कैसे रेफर करते हैं और किस तरह घर वालों को काउंसलिंग करते हैं के बाद हम लोगों ने लीडरशिप का कोर्स किया जिससे हमें काफ़ी नॉलेज हुई और इसके एक महीने बाद फिर मैंने आईडीएसपी को ज्वाइन किया इस बिना पे कि मैं कम्युनिटीज़ में काम करूंगी फील्ड करूंगी और फिर बाकी लोगों को ये अवेयरनेस दूंगी कि आप लोग भी बाहर निकलो और ये ट्रेनिंग करो और अपने लोगों को सर्विस करो दूसरी जगह जब जब हम कोर्स करते हैं तो हमें सिर्फ ये सिखाया जाता है कि ये चीज़ें आप इसको पढ़ो लेकिन यहाँ पे जब इंसान आता है तो उसको अपनी वैल्यू होती है कि मेरा काम क्या है मेरी वैल्यू क्या है और मैं आगे अपने आप को बढ़ाने के और मौके किस तरह तलाश कर सकती हूँ फिर जब मैं आई में 2010 में आई तो मैंने तीन महीने का जो मेरा वर्क प्लान था वो ओनली ऑन फील्ड विजिट का था उसमें मैंने फील्ड की पूरे ओवरऑल बलूचिस्तान में फर्स्ट टाइम मतलब मैं मेरा था कि मैं अकेले गई लोगों के घर रही उन्हें मोटिवेट किया अपनी काउंसलिंग के बाद सिर्फ नौ लड़कियां थी हमारे पास और उनको मैंने खुद ट्रेन किया जब मेरे जेठानी की डिलीवरी हो गई एक दाई के हाथ में और डिलीवरी के बाद उसकी बहुत ब्लीडिंग स्टार्ट हुई तो हमें समझ में नहीं आ रहा था कि हम क्या करें तो मैंने एक दिन अपने दिल में ये सोचा क्यों ना मैं हेल्थ में जाऊं फिर एक दिन मुझे पता चला कि पी पी एच आई वाले जॉब दे रहे हैं मैं इतनी खुश थी उस टाइम खुशी के मारे मेरी आंसू भी निकल आ रहे थे <laughs> वहाँ हॉस्पिटल में जो मैंने नहीं सीखा है यानी कि डिलीवरियाँ तो मुझे नहीं आती थी पता चला कि ए पी वाले आई डी एस पी रहने के लिए थ्री मंथ के लिए भेज रहे हैं पहली बार है कि मैं अपने पूरे ख़ानदान में एक वायद में सफूरा जो यहाँ रहने के लिए आई हूँ पंजगूर से मुझे कॉल आया कि गवर्नमेंट सर्विस में वो है कि इंटरव्यू है तो आपको आना है मिस्टर बीना ने मुझे तीन दिन की छुट्टी दी मैं वहाँ गई इंटरव्यू देने उसी रात हमारे पड़ोस से एक खातून आई थी इसने कहा कि बाजी आ जाओ मेरी बहू को देखो उसे वो लेबर पेन हो रही थी ना तो मैंने कहा कि मैं तो अभी आई हूँ मुझे इतना नहीं आता लेकिन बाजी ने कुछ सिखाया था मुझे टमी पे तो मैं वहाँ गई उसका वो प्राइमरी केस भी था तो मैंने उसकी डिलीवरी की मैं खुद हैरान थी मैं कैसे कर लूँगी लेकिन जिस तरह मुझे बाजी रुबीना ने सिखाई थी उसी तरह मैंने उसकी डिलीवरी की मैं तो पहले डिलीवरी करने से डरती थी लेकिन अब अल्लाह ने इतनी हिम्मत तो दी कि सिखाने पर मैंने ये डिलीवरी की जो कुछ मैंने अठारह मंथ में नहीं सीखा था वो मैंने यहाँ तीन महीने में सीख लिया है यहाँ के टीचर्स ने यहाँ के डॉक्टर्स ने यहाँ के 
लोगों ने स्टाफ ने मुझे इतना सिखाया मैं जिंदगी भर उन्हीं के शुक्रगुजार हूँ मैं यहाँ से जाऊँगी तो अपना ही क्लिनिक खोलूँगी और अपने इलाके के गरीब लोगों की बहुत ही अच्छी तरीके से इन शिलीवरियाँ करूँगी train about 100 and more than 168 uh, young girls uh, who are now practicing and who have gone beyond the barriers of um, reaching out to all uh, any kind of situation um, a combination of uh, public private partnership that we had with the local hospital here and the communities and recently uh, we are our model is now being followed by the government of Rajasthan with whom we have become a partner एसपी का जो अमेरिकी फ्री प्रोजेक्ट है बेसिकली इसका नाम माँ है और माँ इसलिए रखा गया कि इसमें जितने भी लोग काम करते हैं वो माँओं की जान बचाते हैं तो हमारे जो आईडीएसपी की लीडरशिप की ट्रेनिंग है वो बेसिकली इसीलिए डिज़ाइन हुई कि मिडवाइफ जो है वो एक लीडर है जो कि अपना घर घर और बच्चे भी संभाल सकती है और कम्यूनिटी में भी सर्विस दे सकती है और कम्यूनिटी के इश्यूज़ पर भी बात कर सकती है अभी जितनी भी बच्चियाँ हैं वो सब अपने घर में ही सर्विस दे रही है लेकिन उनकी अर्निंग भी हो रही है और उन्होंने अपनी एक रिस्पेक्ट भी बनाई हुई है कम्युनिटी में और वो आ, अपना काम भी कर रही हैं और उनका एक नाम भी हो गया एक आइडेंटिटी बन गई है कि ये है इनके पास जाओ और ये किस तरह गाइड करते हैं काफ़ी लोग जो हैं जिनका इस ट्रेनिंग के बाद उनका घर चलना शुरू हो जाता है बहुत कुछ सीखा आई डी से तीन महीने में सिर्फ मैंने 101 डिलीवरी की इसके बाद जो है हम आए अपना क्लिनिक खोला तो आई ने इसमें बहुत सपोर्ट किया खासकर मेडिसिन के हवाले से आ, बुक्स जितने भी थी मेडिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट थे बेड वगैरह थी यहाँ पे मैं अकेली होती हूँ सब कुछ है वो मुझे ही हैंडल करना होता है कभी कभी ये हो जाता है कि एक ही रात में ये दिन में तीन तीन पेशेंट भी आ जाते हैं तो हमारे पास वैसे भी होते भी दो बेड हैं जो पेशेंट हमारे हमें रेफर करना होता है तो हम उनके साथ भी चले जाते हैं कुछ पेशेंट तो ऐसे होते हैं मतलब सेकंड डिग्री पीपीएच में जा रहे होते हैं तो हमारे पास वो फैसिलिटीज़ नहीं होती फर्स्ट एड दे हम उन्हें रवाना तो करते हैं कभी कभी हम उनके साथ भी चले जाते हैं आई डी एस पी लीडरशिप कोर्स के बाद ही हमें इतना कॉन्फिडेंस आया कि हम दोनों हम दोनों सिस्टर ने क्लिनिक खोल के मतलब खुद हमें इतना कॉन्फिडेंस था कि हम दूसरे पेशेंट को ट्रीट करें उनकी डिलीवरीज अपने बलबूते पे करें डॉक्टर की ज़रूरत यहाँ पे इतना ना हो हमें भी चाहिए कि हम इस नॉलेज को अपनी तरफ भी खींचें हम खुद भी ये ट्रेनिंग करें और दूसरों को भी ये नॉलेज दें There are about more than thousand young women across Balochistan who are lying there uh, with the with their certification and diplomas, and they are waiting for this uh, hands-on training in midwifery and as also uh, emerging as a leader, a woman leader in their community. This is a very revolutionary approach because a woman in the in the community trained as a midwife is so close to the isolated young mother. who has no one to turn to in the remote villages and then she also comes up as a community uh, health uh, teacher and activist who becomes a very strong advocate on on young women's health this is almost it's becoming a movement now we really want to uh, continue this program and we are constantly looking for resources and support azadi to fun ek zimmedari hai
I think uh, uh, we got Blustan here in some way. There's still more, more information I, uh, we have on actually what IDSP is all about and uh, where it, uh, it is situated. But I think at this point, if uh, uh, we can have some interaction, some question answers for more directed uh, elaboration in, in view of your questions or, or any concerns or any explanations, that will be better. That will be great. Clearly, the uh, participants felt that the leadership training was uh, of extreme importance. Can you elaborate on what, what happens in your leadership training sessions? Sure, thank you. What uh, our first uh, thing is to, for the girls to open up and share their stories of their own lives, what has happened. Nobody has heard them before. They are not supposed to express the they're, even for boys also, expressing your grief and your sadness is considered useless time spent and no need for all that. Uh, what is this? Telling about your sadness, telling about your weaknesses, saying things which is opening up uh, families' uh, uh, secrets, how they treat their girls. So it, don't, nobody cares about that. So we first, for first one uh, week or 15 days, is focused on the stories of the girls in collectively in groups and they have to say it themselves. There's a lot of cries, they cry a lot. Sometimes they even uh, become unconscious and sometimes uh, we, we discover that the girls are suffering from very low blood pressure, they can't take it. And uh, we have to rush them often to hospitals also during those story sessions. And that's where, the, from there we, we start the healing process first from within. And, um, Sometimes we come across very acute kind of, uh, uh, you know, depressions. And then we call the parents in also that this is what the girl is going through and why she's going through like this. Is she your real daughter? Did you ever, uh, did you ever, you know, we know she's a real daughter, but we raise questions to think for, by the family also. So we, have, we get the families also some, in, sometimes in, in the serious cases. And after those stories, then they have to write their stories then they have to write it again and again. It's not a written culture, it's a very spoken culture. They talk, they tell stories by mouth, and uh, nobody writes so much. So we help the girls to write. In the night times, uh, they are just writing, because then they're away from the hospital setting. They are into our, our own uh, classroom setting and our residential hostel. And then they write, and then again they come on the podium here, uh, like this, and then they have to speak uh, narrate what they have written to, to the forums. And this exercise again and again makes them, you know, stand up and, and be brave about. So basically we work around uh, helping them become fearless. One fearlessness is when they are alone in the labor room and delivering babies on their own alone, dealing with life and death. That is one, area, one element of fearlessness which they get gripped with it very nicely. The other one is how to uh, address their own internal fears that they, are, that they don't talk to men, uh, they, are, they are like all the time agreeing to everything, not a decision maker. So we have, uh, we have sessions on decision making, the power of money that they are going to earn, that is, that's a power, uh, and uh, giving service to the community is a power. So these are the areas that we focus on. Then uh, communication skills, uh, decision making skills, uh, knowing the whole policy, policy of the government, the whole scenario that why so many deaths uh, on 100,000 live births, 760 mothers die in Balochistan. So this question mark, we bring it to the, them and a little bit of political uh, aspect also. You're not just a doer and giving a service. You have to be a conscious thinking and, and, a, and a politically thinking woman also. And then we bring in uh, issues like uh, child marriages, underage marriages, what it does to the body of the girl. So you have, because you see the body of the, of the woman, what you see, nobody else sees. So you, you have to hold a lot of uh, community engagement and, sh and tell what you have seen on the body of the girl. This is your responsibility. So come out with the, with the, you know, they hide things. 
there's a culture of hiding. And she, we trained her to bring it out in the open. At the policy level, speak in front of the secretaries and the ministers, as well as among the men of the community that whom you have always been scared of, or in the family you were scared of. And then sometimes we bring it, the issues up into the family also, that you made this girl so scared. Now she is earning. She is paying for her brother's fees, at, uh, education fees. She is paying for the building of the roof because no one else is earning that much. She is the only one. So th these are the, through the stories, we, uh, we uh, do the leadership. It's not against anybody. It's not again, like a f men against women fighting. It's not that. It's really understanding of human, uh, girls as a human, equal human. That's what it is. And most of the time, the realization is, is fantastic at the men's level, at, the, at all levels. It's beautiful. And that's what we call leadership. Yeah. Hi, I'm wondering what's the minimum education that girls are coming into the program with and how much of an obstacle is that for them being admitted? Exactly, thank you. Um, the government requires uh, for the diploma, uh, the, the diploma has to come from the government. We are not a diploma giving organization. So the 18 months training is required before they come to us for four months. Uh, and they have to be 10th grader, minimum 10th grader. But uh, there were no 10th grader in, in, in this large numbers before. First thing when I entered Balochistan in 1992, I helped the government establish girls' primary schools, 222, 2,200 schools in 92. So those girls are from those schools are coming out. So I had to stay. I wanted to stay to complete the whole cycle of, uh, it's, it's not like a donor driven project, uh, USAID or other uh, donors comes in with money and it's, it's a time bound, time bound, money goes, project goes, everything goes. So I resolved that I have to show the, the whole demonstration to the communities, to the people who have never seen the empowerment of girls with, with education. Unless I, I complete the full cycle from primary school, at the age of six, down to the, up to the uh, professional uh, service level. Only then this whole um, barrier, psychological barrier will break down. So it, from 92, uh, I was into girls' education, and now with the IDSP in uh, young adults' education. Thank you. Um, I just finished reading um, I Am Malala. And uh, in that book, of course, you yes. you understand how these extremist groups, such as the Taliban, keep coming through and shutting down and closing the schools, if not burning them down and harming the girls. Can you speak to that? Have you been um, faced with any of, sure. of in, that extremism? Yeah. In Balochistan, uh, it's, it's not that kind of extreme. The place from where Malala is coming from is directly involved with Afghanistan. The, it's the, uh, there's hardly any border between uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Afghanistan. While there is a huge border between Afghanistan and, and Balochistan too, but because Balochistan has three kinds of ethni ethnic uh, communities, Balochis, Pashtuns, Pashtuns who are from Afghanistan, and Hazara. So all three have their own dynamics. So th it's not absolute there of uh, this kind of uh, 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 reactions that you have just uh, from Malala's place. But of course, undercurrents are there. As far as I was concerned, I went straight not to the community at large. My methodology is always to go where it matters. I do not go, go through the power structures, never. I go, for example, in this case, it was the girl herself who was sitting at home after being a full-fledged midwife but not doing anything. So go to her, to her parents immediately. So I go to the, I work from the family level, not from the collective huge big uh, uh, numbers of uh, people outside in the communities or in the districts or in the, in the government or whatever. And for, my, I build models very slowly and very insig insignificantly to begin with. But it grew, if it is true, if it is on the right track, it grows in numbers and it answers itself, all the opposition. The model answers itself. I do not really, uh, nobody confronts me because I am so insignificant. 
uh, the level I work, nobody cares for that level. Even the Taliban, nobody cares. And none of, the, none of us, not a single girls' school or any kind of school was, was blown up or obstructed in Balochistan, not in Balochistan. In, in KP, yes. Yeah. <coughs> KP is where, from where Balala comes. There it's very strong because they are very closely associated. Yes. I'm struck by uh, the, the motivation of these women to set up clinics on their own, and I imagine there are incredible challenges going back to their home communities. What kind of support uh, um, does uh, IDSP provide for those who return on their own to, uh, to set up clinics? Thank you. Our, uh, the way we function is before we reach to the girl, we reach to the family of the girl. So the, the family of the girl, initially they used to, now they don't, they used to travel with their daughters or their sisters up to Karachi, stay with us five, six days and wanted to see, because even the men have not traveled to Karachi, that big city. So they would see and examine every door and say, is there a man around here? Is that locks, are, doors are still locked? Because Karachi is a very, nobody cares for anybody. It's a big cosmopolitan. So we are, from day one, we are engaged with the, families. And when the girl goes back, the, sir, the need is so acute that people are knocking on the door that we have heard that you have a midwife here and I need you. And she, we give her a kit when she goes, graduates from here, we give her a midwifery kit uh, to take along with her. So 90% uh, of the time it's natural. The 10% the refer, where the referral, so we create a good referral for her, where to send. Don't, don't do everything yourself. There's a, there's a limit to where the, the midwifery uh, ends. So that is one thing. The other is, uh, we would love to, if we had resources. We don't have so much resources. But the government of uh, Balochistan is, we are working with them very closely. And they have promised to build one room for each midwife annexed with her house. And the other thing is they are, in, they are enrolling them in their own service program and uh, giving them a salary too. Yeah. Now, no, this program was always there, but there were no women to hire. So they are getting some kind of subsidized salary. At the same time, they are working on their own also. But they have won the government, uh, government uh, um, confidence now. So it's more of an entrepreneurial rather than any dependency on IDSP or on the government completely. But we would love to. We are going into now uh, e-clinics because the distances are so vast. Uh, so we are now going uh, help, uh, training our midwives into uh, establishing uh, e-clinics -e on, on the net. And for that, there's no electricity, so we have to have solar. For solar, again, we have to. So one thing leads to another, another. So, but we are working on it, yeah. And we are networking with other support organizations. Dr. Bakhtiari, um, how are, are these ladies who are running um, these clinics, are they also trained in, in birth control methods yeah. and are they um, providing that service to the women that they're servicing? Um, and also, how is that being taken by the men um, and the community in general that they're working with? Sure. They, are, uh, they are trained in family planning, birth control. But we have not promoted that very strongly because these are young unmarried girls and uh, we don't want them to put that so much up front as one of the service. Uh, but slowly and gradually from the women, they, they themselves are asking. When somebody comes and asks, they have a solution to offer. But they, they, we are avoiding for them to go into forefront because it's very fragile. And where we have reached is commendable for them. So we do not want to, uh, you know, uh, to expect too much from the traditionalists. And um, for us, what is important is the girl and her leadership. And midwifery or this, these things, I, we are using it as a, as a strategy. So that is a means to her, that is, a, that is not an end to us. The end to us is the woman emerging, whether as a good teacher, whether as an as a activist, whether as a, a professional, but she must be seen, understood, and respected equally. So this is a means, 
uh, not ended itself for, for us. But for government, they are looking at, at midwifery program as a model for themselves, which we have created. If, uh, any more? Yes, please. First of all, I'd like to thank you so much uh, for this incredible uh, work of empowering women. I just wonder, um, as a mother of sons and the husband, how, uh, influencing men is often a woman's greatest challenge, I have found. <laughs> and I'm wondering if, if uh, you found any inroads to getting the men to accept this new empowerment of women, and um, if you feel like there's a sense of hope and progress, and I mean, there obviously must be because this work is going on, but how do you achieve that to get the men on the same page supporting their women and sure. whatever? Thank sure. you. Yes, that is a general understanding. Specifically speaking from this, uh, from midwifery project point of view, what, uh, we have seen is that it's the mother-in-law who's obstructing most uh, to the to the young uh, young uh, young daughter-in-law, and not allowing her to go to the hospital. It is so the sons and the men of the family are are kept so far away as soon as uh, birthing thing is being talked, or as soon as the pregnancy is talked. Men are nowhere close by even. Yeah, they, they just leave everything to their mothers or to their uh, to the elderly women and all, and they just hang around way of, far away. So the, it's the it's the uh, in-laws of this young woman who are the who ha and the female in-laws of this woman who are most ob obstructive. They they want to keep the traditions that what happened to her years ago and the way she suffered. So what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why is she making such a big fuss? It's okay. She wouldn't let her go to hospital even at the last minute, and the, and this is one of the reasons that women die, and and men have no say in it. They can't say get out of the way. I am going to take. Uh, they will say, oh, you are a shameless man coming in between. She is not dressed. She is not wearing. Where are you barging in? So men are like, uh, you know, very scared at this time. But now uh, with this educated midwife, those were, uh, you know, how traditional women who becomes midwife after just like that because they happen to be there. But these are women with, uh, with certification, our midwives. They, they are heard by the men also. And men talk to them. Men are comfortable talking to them. Then these other women who, who shouts and who screams and, and doesn't talk in properly. So they are much more comfortable talking to, the, uh, to our midwives. Or if they are shy to talk about you know, this whole thing about the woman's body, they are shy also, men. So they will come and talk to the father of the midwife or the men of uh, the midwife. So, and the men are also shy to talk to their sister or daughter about it because it is so much involving woman's body, they feel bad, uh, out of respect. So they would go to the mother of the mid, uh, midwife and the mother will come around. So it's, it's, it has broken many barriers. It's, I think it's, uh, it's fantastic. I can't explain in you, but uh, I am seeing some, some beautiful barriers being broken down for the purpose. There's a purpose, so everybody unites. If there's no purpose, just for the sake of it, like in Pakistan, in Balochistan, it's rated that uh, they argue with me, that men, women are really, uh, uh, why, why should the family chaperones the woman uh, up to Karachi? Why can't she be strong enough to come on her own? I, I said, fine, she should be. That is her right. Why should a man or a brother or, or a father comes all the way? Um, I said, you know the law and order situation? If something happens to the girl, the whole society will not hold the mother responsible. They come to the father, what kind of father were you are? They will come to the brother, what kind of brother you are? So women don't have to face the society pressure when it comes to the uh, welfare or protection of their family women. And the, 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 the police and, and the, the, it's lawlessness, uh, uh, nobody protects. So the family is now, the men of the family are the last protector and defender of their women because state is not providing that as it should. So when I put things in that perspective, they said yes. I said this is why it is. But when you see only that, that men are all the time, uh, controlling women. They are not, they, I, th I feel if the system works well, they are not fond of controlling so much. They would let it go. 
it's, it's, it's a, yeah, they have talked, they would let it go, but because the system is not supporting, so they have to care of the, take care of their women. That's the whole intent. Uh, what, this is what, maybe I'm wrong, but this is what I see, at least on the surface I see this. Yes, could, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to do this work uh, as a woman in Pakistan? Yes. How you grew up? What were your influences? How you were motivated? Yes, I'm going to be 68 on 25th December this year. A long story. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, to be very, uh, you know, precise, uh, uh, my story is on the, uh, with my name, Quratulain Bakhtiari, TEDx Karachi. And uh, it's all there um, from uh, my childhood till today. Uh, but being uh, uh, in a summary, in a short form, I can say that I was, uh, on my first initial years until the age of 12, I was raised in Pakistan's refugee camps. Uh, and because Pakistan was just created and the population, uh, the country had no place to, to for, and houses for its people. So my parents were also migrant from India. So uh, my first 12 years that I know of, uh, I remember, and that was my basic schooling and my education with, with no infrastructure at all, so surviving on your own. And uh, as a child growing on your own, looking for your own needs and meeting it yourself, nobody is there to hear for you. But all happy, all nice, no bad memories. The struggle and uh, taking uh, life as it comes. There's no water, or of course there's no water, so everybody doesn't have water, so we also don't have water, so nothing big. So let's go and find water, all right? Uh, uh, no food, all right? Many people don't have food. Let's, let's go to the friend's house who, whose mother has already cooked, so that he, would, he or she would take us there. <laughs> and you know, it was like, uh, okay, life, it's, this is the way life is, fine. So that's how I grew up. And then uh, ever since that thing is still there, uh, I feel still like a, uh, as a nomad. Uh, I don't have that strong connection with, the, with, uh, with home or with things or with, I'll, I'm more of a people person because people raised me in those first will. It was community who raised me. And we, we used to be in people, uh, my friends' uh, children's homes. We would sleep there and next morning we'll find ourselves in our own bed. We do not know where we sleep, where we eat, because there is nothing. Uh, there is just, just, no, just a room and nothing. Uh, so that's how we grew, and I think that was good, great for me. I'm happy I, uh, that uh, those 12 years were there for me. And uh, so I have learned to create and live uh, by meeting my own needs and by removing obstacles uh, collectively. I, I can't take barriers, I can't take obstacles. I think, I, my mind thinks and my experiences has said that you can do everything. There's nothing you cannot do. Uh, my mother brought me up by saying never say no and never accept no as we were small. Just go and do it. Just go and, don't tell me, go and do it. Oh, we are stuck in such a place. All right, take your brother and take some boys, go and get it done. She wouldn't even look around us where I am stuck. Oh, what has happened to me? <laughs> and when we come back, bruised and whatever, she would make a big heroic thing out of it. Wow, wow, great. This is what you have done. And she would tell those stories to my aunts and uncles and others, everybody. So it was nice. We were poor without the feeling of being poor, yeah. of poverty. Uh, so it's, that's, that's what we are uh, having in our institute also. The, the, my experiences of life, it's not that, that I, everything, I'm very good or I have all the answers, but in 20 years I've processed my, my life into a coursework in this campus, in IDSB. So you see, here also I feel I'm again in my camps days, and uh, we are making it, and now the structure is up, and the community people came and they made a nice, big, nice mud structure uh, for us, for our institute. Um, so that's what it is, I think. I, I don't know whether I, uh, who asked that question? Yes, that, uh, did I answer it yes, clearly? Yes, And uh, I was married off at 16, oh. a arranged marriage. Yeah, had three sons, lived with in-laws and everybody, very nice people, but I was different. So <laughs> I gave very bad time to my husband and my in-laws. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
but they were good people. They were all very nice and kind to me. And so, uh, well, there were ups and downs. There were a lot of resistance because this behavior, no one in Pakistan those days used to, women never used to do this way. But I was raised in freedom. On the, I was raised on the open lanes of the refugee. I did not know how to sit inside like a good, nice, uh, happy mother and a wife of a rich man. <laughs> so, uh, yes, until today I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's nice, whatever it is, it's good. Uh, I'm happy, uh, I'm very happy that uh, some energy has given me because I don't belong to Balochistan and they are so uh, nice and kind to me to offer this and I can do things there. So it's beautiful, it's very nice and uh, I think uh, this is what education is all about and should be very, that you, you can uh, change the diversities into and issues and barriers and obstacles of life into, into a meaningful road map for yourself and for your generations to come and create different reference points, not the one that good school, high quality education, good quality school, then Ivy League and I don't know what all things are here and then you get a good job and then you are CEO, all right, then what? So what? What happens then? <laughs> well, then what happens? If you are a big, huge house, lot of money, you are a CEO of something big, then so what? After that, what? So this is a, there's a fundamental problem in today's education, the formal education system. And we are challenging that. Our institute is challenging the formal education system. Yeah. And we have got lots of graduates and models who can stand by that challenge. We have about 180, uh, 100, 100 and 1 lakh 80,000 80, uh, graduates. 180,000 graduates now. Yeah, in 20 years. All of each one of them is a story. So I tell the government, listen to their stories and they will tell you what, what the teaching should be, what the life should be. Because Pakistan has 70% of its population is between 15 and 35. Young population, they are not a loan from World Bank or IMF. They are yours. They are their resource. But everybody, nobody acknowledges this resource. Everybody acknowledges resource that is underground, the oil, the gas, the, the gold, the copper that is underground in the mountains of Balochistan. But these humans, these children, they are not considered like resource. Isn't that strange? So everything has to be really turned around. And this is what we are all about. Um, uh, we are right now, our women uh, midwives can be a great force to turn all this table around. And uh, we have about 1,000 girls still waiting. And each midwife uh, to get them going in four months training cost, in those uh, three years ago, it was 1,500. Now it is 2,000 rupees, uh, dollars for one midwife to get into that uh, place of activism. And that's what is our concern right now, that uh, we, do not let a single diploma holder, midwife, certified by the government, doing nothing, sitting at home. So still there are 1,000 there that we are working all the time to raise that money and to put every girl into this four months training and save mothers, save mothers and bring down that high mortality rate. It's the highest in Asia that Bluchistan is suffering from, highest. Naturally, so many mothers are dying the province or their commun people will be a sad st people. Children are raised without motherness in sadness. So that is a negative, already negative start of point of a, of a nation. People raise in, children raised in sadness, how can they give happiness? They will make others also sad. I was sad, so I'll make you sad also. So this is where uh, I believe that uh, mothers should be saved at all cost, because mothers are extension of God. <laughs> Godliness. Thank you so much. If any more questions or yes, please. 
Thank you for coming. I am, I'm on the board with Sarah, and she's also my medical care provider. And she's been talking about you for since yeah. I've known her, so this is pretty You're special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I have some questions. We have all these systems in place. We have international policy, international human rights, um, international development. What works well? What's not working well? What are the directions that you see the world going in and ways that um, we can focus our attention and resources? Yeah. Yes, a very, very complex question, but a very simple answer. Connect with people directly of all nations. Do not trust or believe the media, the government policies. Connect with the people directly. And it is totally a different thing. Like I am from Bloches, uh, Karachi, uh, an urbanite, never visited Balochistan ever. I have no, any background of that province. And people were telling me, you are going to that place? They, they kill, they don't like women, the women are all indoors, so they will, and next day you will be, you will be kidnapped. Mm -hmm. But these are, this was all media and people in Karachi were telling me. Within Pakistan, they were telling me of a certain place within Pakistan. And I did not, I don't listen because my early childhood never, we never used to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we will do our things, so I still do my own thing, but what my heart tells me, and I follow it. And it never tells me wrong. Yeah. Uh, so I just went and it was totally different. Not a single man opposed me. I wasn't wearing the way they wear things or covering the eye, because Karachi, we don't do that. Now we do it, these days it's different. But in those days, we, and no op opposition from any, just respect respect not because I was a woman but the respect for a guest who's outside the province and respect for uh, for me being there uh, for them uh, without my own interest without my own agenda to change them to convert them or whatever we do they once they assess that and it took a long time for five years because the more isolated people are and they live more on their own wisdom, so they, they, they take their own time to assess you and to trust you. So there is a difference, I realize, between respect and accept. So respect comes first, and then accept came much, much later, much later. And that's what happens if you, were, you just connect with people. People are divine, believe me. Human beings are divine. So why should you get all this system in between divinity and, hum and people? Get rid of all that. That's what I do. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for bringing so much happiness to the world. Thank you. Thank you. That was Kuratolin Bakhtiari in this Juno World Affairs Council presentation, produced in collaboration with 360 North. It was recorded on December 19, 2017 at 360 in Juneau with support from Alaska Airlines, Alaska Electric Light and Power Company, Alaska Power and Telephone, Core Alaska Incorporated, GCI, Hecla Greens Creek Mining Company, Haight and Associates, The Prospector Hotel, Sea Alaska, and Wastman and Associates Incorporated with additional support from the Juneau Human Rights Commission.